By the end of this video, we'll have our character wall sliding, which will slow down our player's fall velocity, and wall jumping, which will let our player jump off walls and bound in the other direction. In a previous video, we got our player jumping and double jumping. We also added in some gravity modifiers. So I've added in this wall to test our player's wall jumping on our wall grid and this platform to try and reach. We'll start with wall slides. So for jumping, we added this ground check to our player, which we can see and edit using a gizmo, which is this white box below our player. For wall slides, we'll add a wall check. So right click on our player and go create empty and name this wall check and the rest we'll do inside our script. So open our player movement script and we'll want exactly the same as our ground check. So we can copy that and paste it, but we'll rename the header wall check and all our variables will replace ground with wall. Then down where we draw a box for our ground check, we can do the same for our wall check. So copy and paste these. We'll make this one blue and get our wall check position and our wall check size. Back in Unity, we can now click on our player and drag in our wall check to our wall check slot. You can see this is positioned at the top of our player's head. On your wall checks transform, drag this over to the edge of your player's collision box. Click on your player and check this fits. If not, you can move your wall check size X and Y till it fits nicely just on the edge of your collision, which is our green box. So when this blue box hits a wall, we'll start wall sliding. And make sure you position your wall check the way your player is facing. Because of this, we're going to want to flip our character when we change direction. So back in our script, we'll add a new function called flip. Here we'll say if we're facing right, which is a boolean we'll add at the top, and our horizontal movement is less than zero, which means we're moving in the left direction, then we'll want to flip so we're facing left. Or if we're not facing right and our horizontal movement is greater than zero, then we'll want to flip. Then we'll set is facing right to equal whatever it's not currently. So flip in the ball, set a vector free for local scale, which is going to equal our current transform dot local scale. Then we'll set our local scales X to times equal minus one. By times in this X by minus one, we flip our sprite. So make whatever the X is negative. If we look in unity and make our scales X minus one, you can see we face the other way. So we want to set our transform dot local scale to equal this new value. And that's it. So let's add in this is facing right variable, copy this. And at the top, we'll go ball is facing right equals true. Because by default, our sprite is facing right. You can set this to false if your character is facing left by default. Now down in our update, we'll call flip. Just to tidy things up, I'm gonna move this falling gravity process into its own function. So down below, I'll add a private void process gravity and copy this and call it below our ground check. So now when we move our character around, it'll change direction. Next, we'll add in our wall slide to add a new header called wall movement and then add a public float wall slide speed. And I'll set this to a default of two. Then we'll also want a ball that is called is wall sliding. Cool, so now we have process gravity. Let's add process wall slide, private void, process wall slide. So let's think about how to wall slide. We need to be not touching the ground on a wall and be holding our movement towards the wall. So our movement can't be zero. So we're gonna need a Boolean to check if we're grounded or not. In our ground check, we currently set this with our double jumps. But to make this easier, let's add an is grounded Boolean. And in here, we'll be setting this to true. And for when we're not touching the ground, we'll set is grounded to be false. Let's go to the top and under ground check, we can add our ball is grounded. Take this down in our process wall slide. We can now go if we're not grounded and that's it so far. <laughs> so next we want to know if we're on a wall. So like our grounded check, let's add a wall check. So we'll go private void wall check. And here all we want to do is know if our wall check is true or false. So we can copy our physics 2D overlap box, same as the ground check and type return, paste what you've got and then replace ground check position with wall check position ground check size with wall check size, and then ground layer with wall layer. Oh, and this can't be a private void. It has to be private ball because we're returning true or false. So now we can copy wall check and down in our process wall slide we're building, we'll say if not grounded and wall check. So are we on a wall? And we want to check if our horizontal movement is not zero. If we weren't moving, we'd fall down to the ground and not slide. So now let's set up our wall slide. We'll set is wall sliding to true which we're gonna use for wall jumping later. Else is wall sliding equals false. 
and then in our true wall sliding section, we'll make our full speed slow down by capping our fall rate. To do this, we'll go rb.velocity equals a new vector2. We'll keep our same rb.velocity.x. Then we're going to call a math function. It's going to be mathf.max. Then we pass in our current value, which is our rbvelocity.y. Then we'll type minus and pass in our wall slide speed. This caps our fall rate. Now let's copy process wall slide and up in our update, paste this in. Back in Unity, select our player and scroll down in our player movement script. We have wall layer set to nothing right now. So we're going to need to add wall to our layers and then make sure our wall grid object is assigned. So select our wall tile map and in the inspector under the layer drop down, click add layer and then add wall to one of these user layers. Back on our player. Now we can go to wall layer and select wall. So this is before our wall slide. Now when we press play, if we run over to a wall, jump up and keep pushing our movement to the side, we'll slide down slower than before. And if I let go, we drop down fast. Cool, so now we have wall slides, let's add wall jumps. So when we jump off of a wall, it pushes us in the other direction. So back in our player movement script, we're going to want some more variables. I'm going to keep these under our wall movement header and add ball is wall jumping, float, wall jump direction, another float for wall jump time. And we'll set this to a default of 0.5f and another float for our wall jump timer and then a public vector 2 which we'll call wall jump power we're going to use this to determine how far we jump across on the x which i'll set to a default of 5 and how high we jump on the y which i'll set to a default of 10 as that matches our normal jump power with power in our x it'll make us bounce off of the wall instead of going straight up so now down in our jump function, we'll add some code for our wall jump. So we'll say if context.performed and our wall jump timer is greater than zero, then is wall jumping, we set to true. And our rb.velocity is going to equal new vector2 and we'll pass in our wall jump direction times our wall jump power.x, then our wall jump power and our wall jump power.y. Doing this will make us jump away from the wall. Now we'll add a process for processing our wall jump. So down under our wall slide, we'll go private void process wall jump. And in here, we're going to check, are we wall sliding? Then we're no longer wall jumping. Our wall jump direction is going to be equals the minus of our transform dot local scale dot X. So that when we jump, we jump in the opposite direction to the way we're facing. And we'll reset our wall jump timer. So wall jump timer equals wall jump time. So then we'll say else if we're not wall sliding, but our wall jump timer is greater than zero, we'll get our wall jump timer to tick down by doing minus equals time dot delta time. Now the final function we'll need is a private void cancel wall jump. So we can set our wall jump back to false. So is wall jumping equals false. The reason we want this in its own function instead of just setting this itself is because we're going to call this in an invoke. Using an invoke is handy when you want something to be finished when a timer finishes. So we'll take cancel wall jump and back up in our wall jump functionality in our jump function. Under our RB velocity, we're going to set our wall jump timer back to zero and then call invoke name of and pass in our method. So cancel wall jump, then pass in our wall jump time. And after testing, it works a little better if you add one to this. So it's just one millisecond over our jumping time. Hopefully that makes sense. But basically our wall jump will last 0.5 seconds and then we can jump again after 0.6 seconds. This keeps movement fluid. Now, when we hit a wall and start wall sliding, we want this to be called instantly. So back down in process wall jump, we're going to say cancel invoke name of cancel wall jump. So as soon as we wall slide, we can jump again. Let's call process wall jump up in our update to so under process wall slide. And then we actually have one more bit to add to our jump function. So when we wall jump, we want to turn and face the other way because we've jumped off the wall. So we need to force a flip. We're going to say if our transform dot local scale dot X is not our wall jump direction. So if we're not facing the way in which we're jumping, we're going to scroll down and take what was in our flip and back up, paste this to force a flip. Cool. Now to stop any movement, when we move our character using RB velocity equals a new vector two, I'm going to put this below all our processes and checks and say, if we're not wall jumping, then we can move. And we also don't want our flip to change when we're wall jumping. So I'll place that in there as well. So now when we go to Unity and press play, I'll start wall sliding down our wall and then jump in the other direction. <laughs> you can see how this bounces our player off the wall in the opposite direction that we're facing. I built this little wall jump 
So now you can jump side to side and get your player to the top of a high platform. If we play focused, you can try some stuff out with our public variables, like the wall slide speed you could lower. So you go really slowly down the wall, or maybe you touch a slippery wall and it makes you go down really fast. You can also play with these wall jump powers. So if I set this to 10, you can see, and we now spring off the wall really far. But I find halving your jump power for your X and keeping your Y the same as your regular jump power feels the most natural. And that's it. We finally got our player movement basically down. Oh, I gotta get up. Nice. Next video, I'm gonna be adding player animations. So I'll animate our jump, our fall, our wall slide, our walking, and our idling. So that's it. See you then. Bye.